Hi guys, my name is Susie Duchinski. I'm an occupational therapist and a driver rehabilitation specialist. I'm gonna take a few moments to give you guys a tour of my special clinic. So my driver rehabilitation vehicle is the clinic that I work in. A couple things to keep in mind. I'm gonna show you guys some equipment and different things that I use that as a driving rehab specialist, I'm specially trained to use. So it's important to note that as an occupational therapy practitioner, you would never get into a moving car with a client. You need specialty training, special equipment, and special liability insurance. Um, so the stuff I'm showing you today is really in the realm of the specialist. But I think it's important that you know about this equipment and know what options are out there so you can better help your clients. All right, let's take a look. So I'm starting the tour over here in the passenger front seat. This is actually the seat of the driver rehabilitation specialist. This is where I do my work when I'm working with the client. Obviously my client would be driving the car and be in the driver's seat. So from my perspective, there are a couple pieces of equipment that I absolutely need from this seat um, so that while I'm buckled in, I can help my client the best I can. So the first piece of equipment is this extra rear view mirror. I've got this mounted up here so that I can see the cars behind us. I also have this specialty mirror right here. It's a little circular mirror. It's called an eye check mirror. When I'm positioned properly and have this angled correctly, I can see the eyes of the driver without having to turn to face them and distract them while they're driving. I also wanna show you my instructor brake. My instructor brake is something that I absolutely have to have. This is a piece of equipment that I use as a last resort to help control the vehicle. It works just as the normal brake would in the car and it helps to stop the car if needed. So let's take a look at that. Here's a video of the instructor brake itself. It's installed into the floor of my vehicle. I can rest my foot here on the hinge, and then if needed, I can come over here and press the brake. Then come back here and rest the hinge. So this is a video of the OEM, or original brake, that the driver would use. And I wanted to show you that when I hit my instructor brake on my side, it actually depresses the vehicle's brake as well. This is called a mechanical brake. It's attached with a cable, and my brake is attached directly to the driver's brake. Again, as we go through this information, keep in mind these are the tools of the driver rehabilitation specialist. I'm specially trained, I have advanced training to use these different pieces of equipment, and I know just how and when to apply them to help keep the driver safe, myself safe, and the others on the road safe. As an occupational therapist and driver rehabilitation specialist, there are many clients that I work with who don't need special equipment. What they need is a driving evaluation to determine their fitness to drive after an injury or illness. So it's important that my car, my driving rehab vehicle, not just have access to special equipment, but that it could also be driven normally or without equipment. So see here, I've got my standard steering wheel, I've got my standard seat, right? And then um, down here at the bottom, I'm going to show you, we've got our pedals that operate just regularly and normally. So there are times that as a driving rehab specialist, I'm working with individuals that don't have the use of their right leg, you know, for one reason or another. Maybe they've had a stroke or they've had an amputation and their strength lies in their left foot. For those individuals, I can implement something called a left foot accelerator. This one is made where it goes in and out on the floor and it hooks up here on the floor mount, okay? The way a left foot accelerator works is we have a new left pedal over here that becomes the gas and then we use our standard brake pedal for the brake. What's interesting is you might think that learning to drive with your left foot is pretty simple to do, but in the reality it can be rather complex because what our brain still thinks is even though we're using our left foot, it thinks, oh, the brake is to the left and the gas is to the right, but that's opposite. So as a driver rehabilitation specialist, I spend a lot of time working with people on developing new motor pathways to reinforce that the gas is to the left and the brake is to the right. And of course, I'm a little far back here, just for the picture, but if I brought myself forward, this is more where I'd be positioned so I could pivot and use my gas over to my brake. Gas and brake. This can be a simple solution for a lot of clients. Hand controls are another great adaptive equipment solution that can help clients with a range of difficulties where they're not able to use their legs well. It can be from a stroke, amputations, peripheral neuropathy, whatever the cause may be, hand controls could be a solution. 
I'm gonna show you a variety of different hand controls. Some you use with the left hand and one that you use with the right hand. There are different motions to make the hand controls go. You'll see in all of them, you use your one hand to push to break, and then the same hand will either pull or rock back or push down to go. When you're using your one hand for the hand control, you use your other hand then to steer using a steering device such as a spinner knob, a single post, or a tri pin. I'll show you guys those things as well. Here we have an example of a mechanical left hand push pull hand control. So to operate this hand control, the driver is taught to push to break and then they're taught to gently pull to go. Push to stop and pull to go. While they have their left hand on the hand control, they're then taught to use the right hand and a spinner knob or some kind of steering device. This is just a standard spinner knob to help turn the wheel to the left and to the right. From this position, clients can be taught to either use the turn signal that's already in the car, or sometimes they need special equipment as well or special buttons so they can get to things like their turn signal, their horn, and their wipers. So this is the push, pull, left hand control. The first one I showed you, the push-pull hand control, is a very simple hand control, easy to use, and one that I often start my clients on, especially if they are a little bit older or they might have any trouble learning. But there are times that I need different hand controls, such as this one. This is the push right angle. So for this hand control, we again push forward to brake, come back to neutral, and then rock down at a 90 degree angle for the gas. So we push to brake, come back to neutral, and then rock down to go. What's tricky about this hand control is you have to make sure that you come to the neutral position before you put the gas on. The last thing we wanna do is to have the car braking and put the gas on at the same time. In that situation, we would be braking and gassing together and burning out the brakes. I've also added a different spinner knob here. This is a steering device called a single post. It's great if someone's having any kind of trouble with pronation. It slides right into the mount and again, we can turn the wheel to the right and to the left easily. With this hand control, individuals can still practice coming up to the regular turn signal, or if they're having any difficulty, we can again incorporate different buttons, Bluetooth mechanisms to help record and uh, have ability to use secondary controls like the horn, the wipers, the lights, and the turn signals. This next hand control is called a push rock. This is the left hand mechanical push rock hand control in this situation, you can see the hands much closer to the turn signal, which some drivers really like. For this the hand control to work, you're gonna to push to brake, just like all the other ones, come back to neutral, and then it's a rocking motion back, just very lightly with the fingers. Now, right now I have the door open, but if the door were closed, I could rest my elbow and then just very lightly rock back. So again, it's push to brake, rock back to go, easily to the turn signal, back and forth, um, the other thing you have to remember about this hand control is just like the push right angle, I'm always teaching the client to come back to a neutral position because here, you, again, you could push the brake and rock the gas if you wanted. So we have to be careful that we're not putting on both at the same time. I also have in view the tri-pin. Um, this is a, adjusted for somebody with a mar much larger hand than mine, um, but just for sake of demonstration, I wanted to show it to you quickly. So the tri-pin is good for somebody who might be having difficulty with their grip in any way, shape, or form, um, or even wrist strength. So um, I had an individual with an incomplete spinal cord injury, C6. He needed something like this. He did well with his arm in a neutral position, and when it was adjusted properly, he could easily turn the wheel to the right, turn the wheel to the left without having to rely on his grasp so much. Um, the difficult thing about this is his arm is positioned in here, so you need to make sure that somebody's positioned properly. Keep in mind, I'm an OT and a driving rehabilitation specialist. I have advanced training for all of this adaptive equipment. So as a general practitioner, you wouldn't be recommending or using any of this, but it's important for you to know and understand what options are out there so that you can help get your client to a driving rehab specialist at the right time. Um, as a generalist, you can do anything related to the car up to turning the engine on. But after you turn the engine on, those are the skills of the specialist that require special training, special equipment, and special insurance as well. 
So I'm going to show you the right hand mechanical hand control. This is by Vigel. It's called the Compact 2. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to give you an idea of how the hand controls, the mechanical hand controls actually work in the car. So you can see right here, there's a rod that goes down. And this rod actually goes all the way down and attaches to that bracket right on top of the brake pedal. Okay, so this is mechanical because it's using a rod system that attaches right to the OEM pedal or the original brake pedal. The same is true, this is the rod that's going from the hand control all the way back to the gas pedal. So if this one's attached from here, so that when that rod's moved, it gets to the gas. All right, um, I haven't shown you the kind of the driving angle of this hand control yet, but just to get an idea, the way this one works is you push, and you can see it pushes on the brake, and then we're gonna rock back and extend the gas and gets the gas pedal. So it's really interesting because it's a simple solution to help people be able to drive their vehicles and be able to move around in the world. Um, but it does take special training for, to have this equipment selected to be able to use it and then also to install it as well. We're gonna talk about installation and the teams that you use to have the proper equipment installed in just a moment. But let me show you this right hand control, how it operates from another angle first. So I'm going to show you the right hand mechanical hand control. This is by Vigel. It's called the Compact 2. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to give you an idea of how the hand controls, the mechanical hand controls actually work in the car. So you can see right here, there's a rod that goes down. And this rod actually goes all the way down and attaches to that bracket right on top of the brake pedal. Okay, so this is mechanical because it's using a rod system that attaches right to the OEM pedal or the original brake pedal. The same is true, this is the rod that's going from the hand control all the way back to the gas pedal. So if this one's attached from here, so that when that rod's moved, it gets to the gas, all right? Um, I haven't shown you the kind of the driving angle of this hand control yet, but just to get an idea, the way this one works is you push, and you can see it pushes on the brake, and then we're gonna rock back and extends the gas and gets to the gas pedal. So it's really interesting because it's a simple solution to help people be able to drive their vehicles and be able to move around in the world. Um, but it does take special training for, to have this equipment selected to be able to use it and then also to install it as well. We're gonna talk about installation and the teams that you use to have the proper equipment installed in just a moment. But let me show you this right hand control, how it operates from another angle first. Okay, so here we are with the right hand hand control. So with this one, again, we would push to brake. And then when it's time to go, we just kind of rock back and it goes. So in many ways, it's very natural and easy to use hand control. And I have a lot of people who like this hand control because it's on the right side. It kind of looks like it's part of the car. It's easy to drive with, easy to use. And then of course, you'll notice the spinner knobs on the other side now. So if we're using our right hand for brake and for gas, we're then using our left hand to steer the wheel to the left and to the right. And a lot of people also like this because they feel like they can easily come from the spinner knob but stay attached to the, turning, to the steering wheel to get to the turn signals. Or if they need to you know, quickly come off of the gas and get to the wipers, they could do that. So there's different options and different people feel differently. Um, there are times that I have people where they have choices between a right side or a left side and I'm helping them make those decisions. So I started to mention to you guys that the type of equipment you install needs to be guided and selected with the driving rehabilitation specialist. We are also the ones responsible for helping you train to use that adaptive equipment. Um, it really averages on the number of hours needed for training and depends on the person, but a couple of hours at minimum are needed really to learn to use this equipment and be proficient. The other thing I do as a driving rehabilitation specialist is to help to make sure that my clients are properly licensed. So I live and work in Pennsylvania and in Pennsylvania anytime you're using adaptive equipment you have to go through the driver's licensing test again so yes that means using the adaptive equipment to parallel park and get your license updated after we have your license updated then I work with you to help find a vendor that can install the equipment we look for vendors that are part of the National Mobility Equipment Dealership Association or an AMIDA, and specifically who are part of the QAP or the quality assurance program these vendors have certain checks and balances that they're using to make sure the adaptive equipment is installed correctly. 
You know, I know some of the equipment I showed you today looks like a simple solution, but if you're off by a millimeter, if the rod is the wrong length and pressing on the gas pedal, or too short and not working well with the brake pedal, or the steering knob is put in a position where it's interfering with the airbag, things can go really, really wrong. So it's important that we partner with these vendors who are skilled, who understand the vehicles, who order the proper equipment and their proper fitting brackets so that our clients have the very best outcome. After somebody has completed their licensing process with me and we order the adaptive equipment, which is done by me writing a prescription, the vendor installs that equipment and then I go with the, with the client to the vendor to pick up the vehicle. And my job at that point is to make sure that the equipment, not that it's installed properly, I am looking at some of that, but my real job is to make sure that equipment is installed to fit the needs of the driver. So do we have the spinner knob in the right place? Do we have the hand control adjusted properly so it's braking as they want to brake and gassing and responding the way that's comfortable for them? Can they put on their safety belt? Can they reach all their safety features? Can they operate the primary and secondary controls? How does it feel for them the first time they're in the car? And I'm doing all these different pieces with them. Think of it this way. It's if you've ordered a wheel chair for somebody you still want to see how they sit and fit in that wheelchair before you kind of sign off and send them on their way so that's what I'm doing with the final fitting checkout as well so lots of moving pieces that a driver rehab specialist has with the role of adaptive equipment but we play a really big and important role with helping to connect clients with equipment they can use to be safe on the road so the next time you have a client who has something physical they're overcoming an arm issue a leg issue sensation issue and we're thinking there might be an equipment solution reach out to a driver rehabilitation specialist and see what options are available it's my job to know about all the different pieces of equipment it's your job to know that options do exist out there let's work together to find the best solutions for our clients and make sure that everyone on the road is as safe as they can be and as independent as possible. Thanks so much for taking a minute to listen to these different YouTubes. Um, as I mentioned before, I'll say it again, I think it's worth repeating. As an OT generalist, you would not get into a moving car with a, you would not get into a moving vehicle with your clients, okay? Not as a passenger, not as a driver. Getting into a moving vehicle requires the skills of a specialist. It requires advanced training, special equipment that I showed you, the instructor brake, the mirrors training to understand how to control the vehicle, and special liability insurance. So um, what I've shown you today are different resources for the specialists, but it's important for you to know that they're out there so you can connect your clients to the individuals that they need when they need them. Thanks so much, have a great day. Make sure you check me out on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Join us on Driving Rehab for the OT. Take care guys, bye-bye.